How's it going everybody? I was thinking about what I might make a video about. It's been about a week since I did one. And somebody made a comment on one of the other ones I did. One about Paraville Battlefield in uh, Paraville, Kentucky. And it was kind of funny. Of course they liked Paraville Battlefield. The actual area and the terrain. But one of the comments they made was asking me what in the world I was chewing on. And it dawned on me, I was thinking at first, did they mean, were they wondering whether it was what type of chewing tobacco? Or whether they were wondering, was it chewing tobacco or bubble gum or whatever? So, that got me to thinking, what can I make a video about? And I thought about it and gave it some consideration. And I thought what I'd do is I would kind of go through at least my history of chewing tobacco. Because, yeah, in most all videos at the moment, you don't see any chewing tobacco. But, got a nice Perrier bottle here for a spit bottle and I've got a whole assortment of chewing tobacco right down here on the table and I'm gonna get the camera in a minute I'm gonna go through each one and I'm gonna talk about it a little bit but a part of the reason I wanted to talk about it is kind of talk about my experience beginning with chewing tobacco years back and then discuss each one and what I find different about them if you're wondering, you know, I'm not doing all this Surgeon General stuff telling you don't chew chewing tobacco. I've chewed chewing tobacco started when I was a teenager. And I'm 50, soon be 52, and I'm still chewing tobacco. And I'm going to keep chewing tobacco if I want to until whenever I die. And no, I don't have mouth cancer. And yes, I have all of my teeth with the exception of one. The one is the left rear wisdom tooth. The other three wisdom tooth I still have also. And I have a cap on two teeth, but the caps are because teeth got broken, not because chewing tobacco took them away from me. The key factor there, from my perspective, is you have to use a toothbrush. Your teeth rot out if you don't brush them, don't floss them, and don't take care of them. And by the way, go to the dentist every six months and see your dentist and let them clean them for you. And if you need fillings, get the fillings. If you need caps, get the caps. Take care of your teeth. The chewing tobacco itself won't destroy them but it'll help because it's got a lot of sugar in some of it so you can imagine you stick a lot of sugar in your mouth suck on it for hours and hours during the day if you don't take time out every night and brush your teeth you end up with a mess plus it makes your teeth really brown if you've got any like food particles on it the chin the back it will turn them brown but anyway I'm gonna hop up come over and get the camera I'm gonna move it close and I'm gonna discuss each type I've got here alright just looking at it you can see I've got quite an assortment of different things here and I was going to go through them one at a time using the uh, ideology of picking them up each one at a time and bringing them before the camera. Hopefully it'll focus and change its focus. I'm going to start with this one. This is Beech Nut brand chewing tobacco. And it says Beech Nut, the original. And of course nowadays they've got the warning that it's going to kill you and it's not a safe alternative to cigarettes. It's going to chew your face off or whatever. But anyway, Beech Nut Chewing Tobacco. The reason I'm starting with this one in my commentary is this is the first one that I remember having a chew of tobacco from. Now I'm not positive it was Beech Nut I got, but I think it was. And the reason I'm not positive but think it was is because I was five years old at the time. My dad chewed tobacco. And I was out in the garage watching him work and seeing what he was doing. Well, while I was watching him work, he had some of this and he pulled it out, or pulled out a pouch of chewing tobacco, put it in his mouth and started chomping away. Well, I being five years old, not knowing it better, I asked and I guess he thought that my learning curve would be much advanced if he just gave me the pouch. So with no instructions, no idea that I should spit the juice out, he handed me the pouch. So I, of course, took the pouch. This one's brand new, so it'll take a second to open, but I took the pouch popped it open, reached inside, got me some chewing tobacco, stuffed it in my jaw and started chomping away. Well, I chomped away at it. I chomped away at it for just a few minutes until I built up a little bit of saliva in my mouth. And of course you can guess where that went from there. That little bit of saliva that built up my mouth, I swallowed it. Didn't swallow the chewing tobacco but just the spit from it and well, my dad got the pleasure of watching his five-year-old son barf all over his garage. Of course, he cleaned it up. 
I didn't have anything to do with that. I was probably three shades of green afterwards. But I'm guessing he probably, after I threw up, maybe felt a little bad. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he thought it would teach me a good lesson. And so he just thought, well, I'll teach you a lesson. We'll have you choose your backer, will we? And needless to say, it didn't really discourage me. So when I was about 13, I might have got some more beech nut. I might have got some of this, red man chewing tobacco. And red man chewing tobacco has been something I've chewed for years. I was in the Army, as any of you that watch most of my videos or some of my videos know. I spent 20 years in the Army, and this was fairly easy to get. And when I first joined the Army, you could buy this at the Army commissary for like less than a dollar a pouch. And these are three ounce pouches, so I would buy them in mass there and chew chewing tobacco. In fact, at one point in my Army career, a guy in my unit right at the beginning at Fort Campbell dubbed me with the moniker or name of Lump Face because, of course, I had a big wad of chewing tobacco in my jaw. He thought that was hilarious. But the guy that asked me about when I was at Perilville Battlefield, I told him Big Mountain Chewing Tobacco, which is this one. This isn't, I don't know how old this brand is, but I got this one or get it at a tobacco shop. They don't have it in like regular stores, but I'm kind of, I don't know, I just try different things. So I got this one in, well this pouch isn't open yet, but they all look pretty much like what you see in this pouch as far as the pouch tobacco. It's just basically loose leaves, it's a tobacco leaf kind of seasoned, maybe flavored, and well if it's cured first, and then seasoned, flavored, and shredded up, and the big hard stems removed, so it's just tobacco leaves, and you used to stick in your jaw, kind of chew at it a little bit, but mostly just hold it in your jaw and suck on it to get the flavor from it. So, and if you're a nicotine addict, you can get some nicotine. Another one that, this one goes back a long ways, is mail pouch. I remember this. I never really chewed this much. It's a it's not as sweet as the others. And admittedly, as I've got older, I really don't like sweet chewing tobacco as much. Still some. But mail pouch, not bad. I got this. And of course, it says this product can cause gum disease and tooth loss. Well, my teeth are crooked, but that's because the wisdom teeth pushed them forward. It's not because of anything else. And I asked the dentist about it. If I wanted to spend four grand, I could have them straightened out. But, you know. A guy in his 50s getting his teeth straightened, yeah, $4,000, I might, no, I don't know, I don't think I'll ever do it. But anyway, that was that older, this is the other one that might have been what I was chewing that day in Paraville, it's called Tennessee Chew, this is original, so this ain't the one that I had over there. They also have a Tennessee Chew, not original, but a moonshine blend. And it's a little sweet, but it's got just kind of a little bite to it. I guess that's their, quote, moonshine flavoring. It's not bad. Not bad at all. And then more recently, I grabbed this one. It's uh, Stoker's 24C. I guess it stands for 24 karat. And it's, again, just a big pouch of chewing tobacco. And these bigger bags that I'm showing you are 16 ounces. So they're a pound of chewing tobacco. Of course, kind of heavy. But... That's another one, more recent one. Those bigger bags all pretty much come from uh, the tobacco shop. Now, one I remember from when I was a kid, if you wanted something stronger, you'd get this. Hopefully, the camera will focus on it, or maybe not. It's staying focused on me. Stop focusing on me, camera. There you go. Now that it's focused on that, you can see day's work. This is a plug tobacco, and tobacco comes in loose leaf, twist, and plug. And that's the only ways I know chewing tobacco comes. But you can go all the way back to like Civil War times, and they would basically take tobacco leaves, kind of like those there, and they press them in a press and make these plugs. And it's literally just the same thing as that, only it's compressed really tight. So you get a whole lot of tobacco in a very small thing. And if you cut it, bite off a piece, cut a piece or whatever, and then you work it apart, you know, it's a lot bigger then, or you can just bite off a chunk and chew on it as it is. Of course, it doesn't have all the sweeteners, flavorings, and doesn't, it's not as, I don't know, 
candied up as the other tobaccos. It's more almost like natural tobacco out of the field. Similar. It does have some additives. Then you get this. I'm going to try to get it where you can see the logo. Maybe it'll focus. There we go. Mammoth Cave Chewing Tobacco. Now this is a twist chewing tobacco. And I asked at the shop if they had a small package of, this is a large Mammoth Cave. But I asked if they had a Warren County, which is, I'm assuming Warren County, Kentucky. It could be somewhere else. But Mammoth Cave is, it's actually the name of a cave system here in Kentucky that's been around since probably the Stone Age. And they named a chewing tobacco after it. And if you look at this, hopefully it'll focus for you. Come on, focus. Well, hopefully it focused on it. Anyway, it's a twist chewing tobacco. And you can see it's literally, they take it like a tobacco leaf and they twist it around. Then they fold that in half and twist it again. And that it gets a little more curing after being cured in the barn, I'm sure, and gets something added to it or something sprayed on it to make it last longer. But this one here has the least flavorings of any of them. This is more like just getting the tobacco out of the field. It's very harsh and strong. So if you're thinking about trying tobacco, which I'm, of course, not recommending and all that Surgeon General, it'll kill you and stuff. But if you ever do think about it, this stuff is really strong. If you're trying twist tobacco, it's kind of an acquired taste. The same with the plug tobacco. It's kind of an acquired taste. If you start off with one of them... Well, if you start off with any and you don't spit, you're going to puke your guts out. That's just the way it works. But I just thought after that person asking me about the chewing tobacco, I'd mention what I chew and where I get it. thought I'd mention what I chew, where I get it, and I figured to move the camera back because I get tired of hunching down so I'd be in frame when uh, I'd set it a little lower so I could show stuff to you all. But that's the different tobaccos I decided to talk about. And, of course, this is not near all. One I remember when I was, like, 13 that I liked really well that came in loose leaf and in a plug was a thing called RJ Gold. I've not seen it in forever. I guess you could Google it. I don't even know if they make it anymore. But it's okay. I like to take, right now, I don't, sometimes the really sweet tobacco kind of annoys me. So at times I like to get some of the plug tobacco or twist and snap off a little bit of it or bite off a little bit of it and then add it to the loose leaf like let's say the beech nut or red man or mail pouch which mail pouch is not real sweet in itself anyway but so then it kind of gives you a, a little bit of sweetness from the other but you can get that little bit of bite from the more harsh tobacco and sometimes I'll just chew the the twist or the plug by itself and enjoy it that way I, like I said, I've been chewing tobacco kind of regularly. I've quit for a few years different times because I just want to quit. But pretty regularly since I was about 13. And I've got a uncle, is it? Uncle or cousin. I, I'm from Kentucky. Forgive me about the rules of lineage and all and how to figure out relatives. I mean, you need a flow chart here, okay? So without a flow chart, he's a relative. And he's an older relative. He was related to me on my mother's side of the family and he's been chewing tobacco I would say since he was a teenager too and he's probably in his 70s now still, to my knowledge he's still got all his teeth and he teeth teeth wow okay yeah I'm a heck teeth his teeth and so I don't know they say that it rot your teeth out they say that it causes cancer there's all these surgeon general warnings but of course i've heard water causes cancer saccharin causes cancer this being honest i'm not buying it i think for my personal opinion just me thinking i think the cancer is caused by a makeup in your body i don't think you know they say asbestos causing all this maybe something causes an irritant but i think you st i honestly believe you have to have a natural inclination to get the stuff and if you do, you're pretty much going to get it somewhere in your body anyway, and probably most of us do. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I'm just a guy chewing, chewing tobacco. And so are you saying to yourself, maybe now I'm trying to justify it, that I don't think it's unsafe? I don't know, and I really don't care. I like the stuff. I chew chewing tobacco. And so I figured I'd make a video talking about it and talking about the different types I've got here before me so that 
I don't know, it's an information video talking about the different types and what they are for people that have never chewed chewing tobacco and don't know anything about it. Oh, a little history about it that some of you might find interesting is years ago, if you go back to like the Civil War, I've read and I'm kind of a reading nut. I love to read things. And one storybook I was reading, it was, uh, it was a history about uh, the old, what was it called? The General... Well, the general, the rail uh, engine that got stolen by uh, some northern sympathizers or northern soldiers that tried to bring it out of the south, and they were going to try to burn bridges again. Well, anyway, they were in prison after they got caught by the southerners, and while they were in there, it talked about them having a very little bit of tobacco, and it talked about that they would chew the tobacco and get the flavor out of it for the most part, and then they wouldn't throw away the cud, which the cud is the name of the the quid or cud being the little bit of tobacco you've stuffed in your mouth. Like, uh, let's say this twist tobacco I've got here. And, you know, most people that live out in the country, and I don't know, maybe in the city too, most of us have a pocket knife. And so you might say like this, the cud could be this. It's just a little chopped off piece of tobacco that had been rolled up to make a twist. So they'd put that in their mouth and they would suck on it and chew on it, get all the flavor out of it and spit the juice and all. And when it was over, they would take it out and I guess lay it up somewhere and let it dry. And once it was dried out, then they would turn around and use the same little tobacco, stuff it down in a pipe and tamp it in and then they'd smoke it. So I'm not sure, again, not a scientist, ain't got a clue. I guess you could get a little bit of a nicotine from it, chewing it, and then get more nicotine from it by smoking it later. So I guess it got double use, burned up, and then they'd knock the ashes out and there'd be nothing left. <laughs> Just a little piece, since I've cut it off, I might as well chew it. But um, so that's kind of my commentary on chewing tobacco. If there are anything else that interests anyone, and I guess what I'm thinking about that is if you're from a city somewhere and you're curious about things that might be out in the country, you know, things you might not see because, you know, if you're coming out as a tourist, it might not come to your site, then make a mention in some of the comments and hopefully I can go find it for you and talk about it, show you about it. And if I don't know about it, maybe I can find a farmer or somebody that lives around here that would be willing to talk on YouTube and tell you some more about it. or about the subject that you're interested in. Uh, since I, I didn't grow up actually on a farm, I grew up in a small town and with many family members that had farms. So did I actually do farming? No, I didn't. Did I do some farming? Yeah, I cut tobacco and tobacco crops, housed tobacco, I did hay bales, things like that. But if you find anything you're really interested in and you think it would be something that you'd like to know more about, leave me a comment. I'll see if I can find it for you. And if you're curious about anything else, I can't really, I'm nowhere near an army post anymore, so I can't make videos about anything about that really, other than just talk about it, which just talking about it without props or without anything to show you would be kind of boring. If I was still in the army, I could make some videos about some of the stuff we did, but I'm not there anymore. I've been retired from the army for 11 years now. So anyway, you all have a great day out on YouTube. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.